Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, everybody. Today I'm interviewing Doherty Miller Shore, chairman of the board of the Miller Ad Agency in Dallas, Texas. Doherty Miller began her career in the automotive industry in 1977 working in-house for a multi-dealer group in Lexington, Kentucky. She opened her first agency in 1981, changing the name to the Miller Agency in 1984. Her agency has become a specialty house catering to the automobile industry when Doherty moved the company to Dallas, Texas in 1987. Since that time, Doherty has helped thousands of dealerships develop strategic marketing campaigns not only in the U.S. but also in Mexico. Her team has earned a reputation as experts in advertising, using unique approaches to marketing and advertising to bring results that their clients are looking for. Welcome, Dorothy. Thank you very much for being here today. Well, thank you for the invitation. Awesome. Uh, Dorothy, before we jump in, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? I know I already mentioned a short bio of you, but maybe you can add a bit more personal stuff in there. Yes, um, I am married um, and have a grown daughter uh, who uh, she and her husband, by the way, are now uh, pretty much running the advertising agency, um, especially my son-in-law. And I have two granddaughters. I also have, um, let's see now, I have two stepchildren and uh, they have a combined four children. So, Mm. uh, and I love being a grandmother. So one of my favorite roles. So um, and I, we travel a lot. Uh, I love to travel. I'm still very active. I golf, ski, all that kind of stuff. So um, I like to think I'm fairly well-rounded, and I'm also just completing a master's degree. Uh, so anyway, that's wow. what uh, that's my life. So that's good. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what now I'd like to discuss is what led you into the ad agency and the marketing field. Is that something you always wanted to do, or is it something you stumbled into? Uh, stumble. <laughs> uh, my career is very serendipity. Um, I got a degree at the University of Kentucky, actually in fashion merchandising, <laughs> with a heavy emphasis on marketing. Um, and I started off as a buyer right out of college. I was 21 years old, the youngest buyer in Mercantile, which at that time was a huge change chain of stores. Um, but um, I was I probably worked in that field maybe a year and a half or something and uh, met uh, uh, not my current husband, but uh, met someone I married and they had a, a, a nepotism law. So we uh, he had been there longer. So I left uh, and I ended up teaching uh, at a junior college uh, fashion merchandising. And they asked me to teach advertising and I had maybe one course in, in college, but Anyway, I did find it interesting, and uh, so when I started, after about four years, decided that I had enough of teaching and needed to get back in a career that that was more challenging for me, at least, Um, and uh, someone told me that there was an automobile dealer that had a bunch of dealerships around the state of Kentucky and was looking for somebody in-house, and so I applied, and you know, as they say, the rest is history. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what would you say your uh, main attributes, uh, traits, qualities, and contributed the most to your success? And do you think you developed those along the years, or was it something you already had? Oh, it's something I had. Tenacity. I, I, you mm-hmm. know, I, I don't know anyone that that is going to succeed long term who doesn't have tenacity. It, mm-hmm. it, it you know, it, it just it, it's what makes you what makes you get up every day and it's what makes you keep going when things are so tough. You just don't give up, you know, and I, I just, I don't give up. I don't give up on anything. <laughs> Even this master's degree, which is just about took me under, you know, I, I just, I'm going to do it. I'm going to finish it. Um, and then I think the other thing, you know, I'm very left brain and um, I think there's a real misconception out there that all ad people are creative, uh, right brain people. Uh, and we're not. Um, and for me, I think what I love most is solving a puzzle. I don't mean a a physical puzzle, uh, but I like, I I keep trying to different things to, to to get it to work. You know, like I'll, I'll try one thing. And this is, this is a a good trait to have in advertising because you, um, you're looking at a, a goal. And so you're trying some of this here. Well, okay, that's getting something, but that's not getting exactly what I want. So I'm going to add this. So because I'm a numbers person, 
Um, and it also really helped me with my clients who also are all business owners and very left brain people themselves. So, you know, we, we could really talk about that. And, and I was always focused on results, not creating a beautiful ad. So I think that had a lot to do with my success in my field. So can, can you talk about something specific in terms of examples of how this trait actually helped you be successful? Um, well, okay. For let's let's just talk about the tenacity thing. Um, you know, I, I made a really bad decision about four years into my co- opening uh, my business, and um, I invested so much money in a venture, um, and I just wouldn't give up on it. Back to that tenacity thing, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but it almost cost me my business. Um, but the same trait that got me in there got me out because I said, uh, you know, my my accountant said, you know advised me to file bankruptcy. (laughs) I said, I will not do it. You know, and they're saying, hey, that's an honorable. And I said, no, it's not honorable. It's not honorable to me. I'm not going to do that. And so uh, I refused. And, you know, I I just, I found a way out. And, you know, I did. And I survived. And, you know, that that was early on, you know, early on in my career um, of just sticking with it. So, and, and I think as far as my wanting to solve puzzles, I think that also can also be, you can apply that same thing with, you know, trying to find new clients and, and so on. You you are always looking for the piece that fits uh, with them. Uh, if you're going to go approach a new client, okay, what what piece are they missing that we could plug in here that would make them whole? So I, I would say that's the best example I could use there. It is a good example. Um, I mean, you already talked about so many adversities that you've faced, but, you know, as entrepreneurs and our listeners, some of them are actually looking forward to hearing what those successful entrepreneurs did when they faced adversities and what kind of adversities they faced. So can you talk about that a bit more? Uh, Yeah, and um, I would say that ad agencies, I mean, of course, most businesses are affected by the economy. There's a few things that aren't, right? Uh, but I think advertising agencies are very, very susceptible um, to the economy. And uh, I've just seen so many fold, you know, in a downturn, uh, even even in my specialized, which you see that less often, but um, many of them are not prepared. And, and that's where being a numbers person really helps you because, you know, I was always prepared for, um, you know, the, the downturns. I mean, you know, I, I never overstaffed. I never had to lay off a bunch of people, but I was always keeping my eye, you know, on, on the dollar and, and I would quickly make changes that needed to be. Um, and I think it was also fortunate because the automotive industry is, is one of the most stable uh, advertising clients you could have in, in you know, among advertising. Um, of course, they're going to cut back, but they don't cut it completely like so many other businesses did. I mean, you know, a lot of, a lot of your clients in non-automotive, you know, they, they get in a downturn, you know, they, they may cut to almost nothing. And that doesn't happen uh, in the automotive. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. I was very fortunate there. Um, and I would tell you, I, I don't think I ever saw being a female um, in the male-dominated business, you know, as a real hindrance. I mean, I, I never saw that. I never... I never thought, oh, well, I'm, you know, they're not picking me because I'm a woman. You know, I, I just don't ever, I never felt that way. I truly didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think, but just by the very nature of being a woman uh, with all male clients for the most part. I mean, I had a few female uh, and they're wonderful and they're still clients. I mean, gosh, the, the, anyway, but, but most of them were men. And, you know, it's, it's just hard to develop a close relationship with them because, and, and that's not saying anything about them. It's just that guys can go, go out and they play golf. They go do things together. Or they go to dinner. Whereas, you know, even though, you know, I could certainly invite them and their wife and bring my husband you know, there was always, they didn't necessarily want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times their wives kind of didn't care for the idea that there was this woman that handled, you know, who was a big part of their uh, husband's business. So I do think that hurts you. Uh, it hurts you. So, uh, but, you know, I, it wasn't anything that kept me from being successful, though. Yeah. Well, on that note, you know, you talked about when things got tough, your tenacity helped you, you know, go through them. Uh, but concretely, concretely, when you talk about tenacity, what 
what would it be? What, do, what does it really mean? I mean, to be to have this tenacity, how does that apply on a day to day? When you really are facing some huge adversities, you want to quit. How do you keep going? You know? Well, I, I, you know, I, I, here's here's the key. It's the key for everybody. I mean, it's you keep your eye on the goal. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether whether it's a business, it's, it's whatever. It, it's you keep your eye on the goal because as soon as you take your eye off that and you start looking at the problems around you, you're lost. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're lost. So. It, you got to keep your eye on the go. Okay, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to worry about this problem here. I'm worried about that problem there. I am going toward that goal um, because, you know, there's always a way around, under, over. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, you just have to put your shoulder down and you got to plow through the obstacle. I mean, that, you know, and I did that many times. I mean, Usually I would try to find a way around, you know, an easier path, but sometimes there was no path except through it. And you just drop your shoulder and you press on, but you just don't take your eye off that goal. Awesome. So. Great, some great advice. Um, I mean, obviously you've done a lot in those years. I mean, what kind of vision do you have for your business currently for the next five years or so? Well, I actually went to my um, son-in-law, Eric Radel, by the way, who is now the CEO of the company. Um, to talk about this because I've, I, he so much is in charge now and uh, has the vision. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give you more his vision, which is brilliant. And by the way, he okay. is just knocking the he is just knocking the ball out of the park uh, with this with this business because he came into it with um, uh, manufacturing experience in the automotive industry himself and a marketing background and. So he is able to build those really great relationships. But anyway, he says that uh, he thinks what we need to continue to do, and I, of course, completely agree, is diversify across new verticals um, and endeavor to stay as fresh as humanly possible with our offerings because, you know, we're, we're in such a fast-paced world. The media is just changing, by, mm-hmm. you know, by the minute almost. Um, so the next year, five years, is going to be defined by increasing uh, addressable media. And what what uh, we mean by addressable media is that uh, the uh, you can deliver a commercial directly to an individual. They, and, uh, you know, it's happening right now from, you know, the specific program to who's watching it, et cetera. And you can, uh, you know, the inventory out there and you can deliver an ad specifically for that person. I mean, it, it's, it's really amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's revolutionized. <laughs> it is. I know, I know. Um, and, you know, so we've got to take a leadership role in exposing, you know, our clients to the opp- opportunities to allow them to win. Um, so, uh, and we're internalizing that as much as possible. So to bring, uh, you know, our creative expertise to that and maximize that impact. So Now, here's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah. um, what do you feel the best way will be to continue to market yourself? You're a marketing specialist, you know, right. specialty house. So how do you do this? Well, uh, and I'll tell you, this is the this is the best way. Um, I, I wish I had learned this much earlier in my own career, uh, but uh, when I was in charge. But but it's being the subject matter expert. I mean, it really is. I mean, it is being the person who is out there, and the automotive people see as the person who is the expert. In the field, so that involves aggressive speaking schedule. Um, and I um, started off back, um, oh, I, I would say in maybe the first time I spoke uh, for NADA, that's the National Automobile Dealers Association. I probably spoke for them back in the oh early 2000 or something in there. And it was amazing what it did for my business. And I was just like, why did I wait this long <laughs> to, to apply to speak at NADA? You know, it was just crazy. Um, because suddenly you are the expert um, and uh, the uh, putting a lot of content out there. We, we, uh, we daily uh, have blogs uh, going up on our site about topics, et cetera. Uh, and it, and that's been brilliant because um, if you Googled uh, automotive advertising agencies, um, uh, Dallas, of course, we'll be number one in every category. But if you d- if you did that across the country, mm-hmm. we are sometimes number one and two. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, uh, it's because we've done 
or he's done, I would say, I'm going to give him a lot of credit here, doing a great job of doing that. But, uh, and he speaks now, uh, far more than I do. I mean, he, he gets, he, he'll be going to Portugal here in a, in a week to speak. Um, uh, because he gets invited everywhere. And so that, that's been what our, our, uh, way of marketing ourselves is because they come to you. It's the whole, whole push pull, um, philosophy. Um, and I'll explain that to people who maybe aren't familiar with that, but, uh, when you are pushing, that means uh, marketing yourself. You are you are shoving it out there, and you're trying to get people to come to you. Whereas the pull is you are they're coming to you because they saw your content, they heard you speak, they they recognize you as an expert. If they Google something, your name, your company keeps popping up. So mm-hmm. uh, so that's how we're doing. And of course, you know, it's still running in par- parallel taking great great care of existing clients i mean um we we have some clients we've had for years and years and years and uh they re- they refer us so that that's what makes the most sense for us right now mm-hmm. so in a sense it's becoming the authority in your market right yes absolutely mm-hmm. makes perfect sense um now, you know, we, you deal with a lot of customers, a lot of clients who have preconceived ideas of what they want to do and how they want to approach things. I mean, uh, working, a lot of them uh, were doing mostly traditional and now they're going to go into the Internet. So really resistant to, resistant to change. Um, what are maybe you want to discuss this a bit in terms of what you think is the most you know, common problem you see among the clients that you or prospects that you talk to? Well, with our clients, and, and I'm going to say, you know, and, and we have, uh, we've expanded quite a bit beyond automotive, especially in the digital. Um, so we have lots of clients across lots of spaces. We even, you know, we have a client that came from China. <laughs> so anyway, um, but uh, I will tell you that one of the biggest problems, especially for <clears throat> clients who are fairly good sized with good budgets, is um, my my son-in-law calls it the myth of the measurable. Um, And that's saying that if you can't measure it, if you can't tie it directly to an ROI, then you shouldn't spend the money. Um, And so what's happened, and a lot of this is going on with the automotive, is they're putting all their eggs in the digital basket um, uh, by default. And and it's a a dangerous place to be because... um, people have to know your brand. Um, so if, if they don't know your brand, um, and you can do all the digital in the world, but they're not going to click you. <laughs> if you are building a brand out there across all mediums, TV, radio, uh, where they you have, a, a, have the time and space to actually tell them who you are and why they should be doing business with you, um, they're much more likely uh, to respond to your digital. Um, so, um, you know, yes, there's an exceptional value in trying effort, every, you know, effort to return, but there's also an incredible value in being memorable, being top of mind, being sticky. Um, and sticky can't always be measured in clicks or calls or leads mm-hmm. or forms. So um, anyway, that, that I would say is the, is the biggest problem uh, a lot of clients, and I, I'm sure that's not just in the automotive. I'm sure that's across the board. Well, that's a very, very good point, I believe. Um, now, I wanted to ask kind of what you thought the, mo- the main benefits were uh, for businesses that follow your leads, but obviously in your case, it's just making more money uh, or making more sales. I mean, uh, but can you maybe elaborate on some of the benefits of actually doing some more of a multi-touch type of marketing versus specific Google AdWords or whatever it is that they, are, they want to do in the digital world? Well, I, I think the return just goes up. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, if you are just because I can't measure the effect of that ad campaign I did with the great jingle or the, you know, or whatever out there, uh, I, I can't measure that because but what I don't know is how many people actually then clicked on my digital because of that. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You, you, there, there, there is a problem there. And, uh, you know, this is the one that, that they're having trouble with and, and they have trouble making change. And, um, you know, it, it, 
you know, that, that is unfortunately the problem. Um, they, there's so many media options and they're just scared and they just, they just want one that, you know, Hey, I can, I can sit here and measure it. You know, like I told you, they're all left brain people. <laughs> they, <laughs> they're going, Oh, I, I, I can count that. Um, so, so that's probably the toughest obstacle we we've, we've had. And that, that hasn't just been recent that I would say that's been a problem going on here, at least in the automotive industry, probably for eight, nine years now. So mm, Interesting. Uh, Dorothy, before we wrap it up, what one piece of advice would you give someone who wants to start uh, developing these types of programs, but really doesn't really know where to start or is scared of hiring a bigger agency because they feel it's going to be too expensive? Well, um, you know, for us, you know, it's the um, trust but verify. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If someone comes to you with a great pitch um, and it can be great, et cetera, it sounds wonderful, but, you know, you've got to, you got to go back and check references. You've got to, if you're looking to hire someone, um, check their references. If, if you get even one client that's like, yeah, well, whatever, you know, um, you need to kind of step back a little bit because most of the references they give you, I would hope, are, you know, really excited about you. And you need a long list. Um, you, you take the ones they give you, but then you want to to go on their website or wherever and scroll down to some of their more obscure clients and pick up the phone and call them because, um, and you always want to, in our business, you can always check with the media too, because you can find out are they paying their bills on time? Are they, you know, um, <laughs> are they reliable? What's the reputation in the market? So, so it really is about reputation and, and you go back to this, you know, big versus, uh, small. Um, I mentioned, uh, uh a client we had that came from China, uh, he came to town and did a uh, Google search uh, for ad agencies, Dallas, and, um, and and just ad agency. That's how good a job we've done on our mm-hmm. our uh, website, but uh, not automotive, and his, his business is not automotive, but we came up in the top three um, locally. And he interviewed us along with two other really, really big agencies here in Dallas, um, and interviewed all three of us. Uh, but at the end of the day, he said his decision came down to, well, I knew when I, if I went with you, uh, your agency, I was going to have like top people, like people that knew, you know, knew what they were doing, uh, on my account because, you know, you meant, you know, you, you were really excited about our business. And he said, I knew that the big agencies though, you know, had met the partners and all that. But when I really started saying, well, now who exactly is going to handle my business? Who's going to be my contact and all that? I started realizing, you know, I just wasn't going to get I wasn't going to get the kind of people that you would get me. So there's always a way to compete with the big company. And people is what you compete with. So. Yeah. Great advice, Dorothy. Now, uh, how can our listeners learn more or actually get in touch with you or your or your team? Well, uh, probably the best way um, is you could just call uh, Miller Ad Agency, um, and you can look us up, uh, of course, online. Uh, it's MillerAdAgency.com, um, and... Uh, the phone number is 972-243-2211, kind of an easy number to remember. Um, and uh, you could ask for Eric Radel, and his name is spelled like Ladel, R-A-D-L-E. Uh, and I, I would contact him. You're also, of course, welcome to contact me um, and uh, ask for Dorothy Miller. Um, and we'd love to, love to talk to anyone who might be interested. Awesome. Well, once again, a huge thank you for taking the time to share these stories with us. It was very enlightening. I uh, found this very interesting. So um, with that, I'll thank you once again and wish you an amazing day. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.